Electricity instills fear in some people because it can be dangerous and has the ability to cause widespread destruction. Electricity can cause deaths, fires and burns. However, when used appropriately, electricity can be used to save lives. Medical equipment such as a defibrillator discharges a current to depolarize the heart muscle, terminate abnormal rhythm and re-establish normal rhythm to the heart. Electricity is also commonly used in surgery. This is known as electrosurgery. The electrosurgical device runs electrical energy through the animal's tissue. The natural resistance of tissue causes this energy to be changed into molecular energy, resulting in disruption in structure and hence destruction of proteins. The result is the congealment of the tissues. When the temperature of the water in a cell increases beyond boiling point, the cell membrane bursts and yields a slicing effect on the skin. The electrosurgical device has the ability to cut and coagulate tissue. When cutting, a very high power is applied to change water vapour into plasma that conducts electricity and a hole is formed where pieces of tissue is burnt. Coagulation happens when a lower power is used, so the heat produces forms a clot instead. Electrosurgical machines are made up of several components, namely the electrode, the electrosurgical unit, and a dispersive pad, as well as foot pedals. The electrosurgical unit generates a current which runs through the electrode when the foot pedal is pressed. This current then runs to the tissue being excised and then through the patient onto a dispersive pad soaked with saline. This pad serves to bring the current from the patient back to the generator. Dispersive pad should be placed on a hairless patch of skin. In this case, it is placed under the stomach of the animal. This is the guinea pig brought to the vet for a tumour in the right ear. Electrosurgery was chosen as the most efficient treatment as it allows the surgeon to reach the ear, which is more inaccessible to the scalpel due to its size. The tumour was successfully excised. In this second case study, Electrosurgery has a great advantage over normal conventional methods. This one and a half year old female dwarf hamster arrived at the vet with two inflamed swollen growths on her ear. A more precise cut can be delivered as a larger area would have to be incised if a scalpel was used. It also emphasizes the ability for the excision of growths far more inaccessible by a scalpel. dwarf hamster was brought in with a growth on its nose. Electrosurgery was once again considered as the best approach as the circular shape of the electrode allows for a more precise cut to be delivered. Here is the hamster after the surgery. The tumour was once again successfully excised. Electrosurgery is safe so long as the personnel handling it is alert and careful. A single electrode has the ability to both cut and coagulate tissues. There is an increased cost of surgery as electrosurgical equipment is more expensive than a scalpel. It may cause burns in a patient's skin if the dispersive pad is not placed properly. Surgical smoke has the ability to transmit viruses. The growths that are excised might be undermined during the process as the electric current devitalizes the tissue and hence a proper histological specimen might not be able to be taken. If the equipment is not used properly, electrosurgery runs the risk of causing burns and electrical shocks in medical personnel. The following is a short clip illustrating the use of electrosurgery in draining an abscess in a dog's eye. A 14-year-old male poodle presented with snoring, sneezing, difficulty breathing as well as a large abscess under the left eye. The dog's snoring was due to an infection of the sinuses near the left eye. The large 3cm abscess was an infected tumour. 
This tumour spread the bacteria to the maxillary sinuses and then to the back of the nostrils. The sinuses thus became infected and blocked. The obstruction and inflammation caused pain and snoring. The maxillary sinuses are connected to the nostrils. The inner side of the left eye connects to the nostrils through the nasal lacrimal duct. Bacteria from the left lower eyelid spreads from there through the nasal lacrimal duct to the maxillary sinuses and into the back of the nostrils, causing sneezing and breathing difficulties. Ketamine and Dormitor are administered intravenously. The dog was not completely sedated, so this was stopped up with isofluorine gas. The electrosurgical equipment is set to cut mode. The dispersive pad is placed on the hairless area on the underside of the dog. The area around the abscess is then clipped. The dog is then intubated so a steady flow of isofluorine gas can be delivered. A pair of forceps is used to grip the edge of the lower lid. The foot pedal is then stepped on to deliver an electric current to the electrode. The pus is then drained from the abscess. After the abscess is drained, the wound is stitched up and the dog is ready to go home.